Good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Folly and Tool, and today we're back with another Aizu campaign video, and today we essentially arrive at the point in which we're going to make a massive western expansion. Of course, last turn we had, well should I say last video, we have kind of a bummer in the sense that we kind of shot ourselves in the foot by inciting a revolt and then we ha end up having to clean those revolts ourselves instead of having those revolts plague the enemy, so we kind of did shoot ourselves in the foot. This time we're going to do be making a massive western expansion. As you can see here, we are trying to take the enemy cities during the winter, because winter has come and we're essentially sieging the enemy out. Most of the armies that you see right here are conscripted armies, of which most of them aren't even mine. They were coerced to join me, and essentially we have a massive field army of western troops, which is not supposed to be what's going on in this campaign. But as you can see by the end of this video, most of our troops are not even going to be our raised, or should I say most of the troops are going to be conscripted, or should I say coerced into my army, or should I say they voluntarily joined us from the enemy army. But needless to say, I got another province and we could just continue to roll them down. At this point, you do see a massive enemy army just sitting right there, so I'm just gonna assassinate and kill all of their leaders, and what we're gonna do is just gonna harass the enemy to the best of our ability, and essentially cause massive harassment. And at this point, you might be wondering, what is the entire point? The entire point of this video is to go west, and eventually make room for our invasion of the should I say imperialist factions and the faster the better because the enemy army or should I say the guys in between us are still shogunate factions and as of right now I haven't decided to completely eradicate them I still need their armies in the field but I just need their land and in order to take their land I need to take their armies and erase them off the field while on the other hand I do have entire enemy army essentially doing this and I'm just gonna fight them on the field and we essentially win we win a decisive victory, needless to say. And as you can tell, most of these battles, I'm just not even going to show you the battle because the most of the battle, the enemies are just going to run around and I'm going to shoot them to death. Needless to say, the enemy is quite kind of still potentially our allies because they are a shogunate faction and our main enemies are going to be in the west. But in this turn, we're just going to be doing some cleanup and house. And after that, we essentially go for the Shogun, because as you can see right here, we are unification of Japan. Basically, what's going to happen is that the Emperor and the Shogun are going to have the war, and as of right now, I'm in command of the Vanguard for the Shogun forces, and we're essentially going to be doing our best to end this war with the Shogun, or should I say, a Shogun a Civil War, as quickly as possible. Might I add that this war was started by us, and I really want to end this war so we can deal with the Imperialists, who are going to be uh, troublesome to beat. But as you can see, my army is still pretty massive, and although we are just going around assassinating people left and right, we do have the possibility of winning a massive field battle. But as you can see, time is of the essence because I do not want the imperialist factions to, or should I say the imperial clans, to essentially get more powerful as we are fighting essentially a civil war and as pr practically destroying our own strength. But at the same time, I very certain that this civil war will end in a complete victory, but at the same time I'm also trying to make allies along the way. But needless to say, I'm gonna take Mino, and we're just gonna deploy a massive army to take Mino. And of course, the taking Mino is gonna be happening very, very quickly, because I'm just gonna essentially fight a night battle, or not, because fighting a night battle will not prevent me. But we do win a decisive victory, a decisive victory in which I did not even decide to show, because the enemy army was practically crushed, and although it says that we have a very high chance of losing, we essentially win. As you can see right now, the Imperialist factions at the Realm Divide have decided to declare war on me, which is absolutely a surprise to no one. I do want to get a peace treaty, but at the same time, I do essentially want them to give us a lot of goodies such as LAN. Eventually, I decided to opt not to, and I just demanded that they break coalitions and join our war against the Imperialists, because with the Imperialist Declaration, we need as many Shogunate allies as we can. One of which is not these people, because these people, who have Omi right now, are essentially going to be my go-to. I need to take them out to essentially move west, and the more west I can move, essentially, I can deal with the Imperialists personally. And yes, it's personal. Needless to say, I'm going to order the assault of the city itself, and of course, I have the complete advantage because I have more than enough artillery to blast them out, as you can see right here. 
Eventually, I do damage on the gate itself, and these guys essentially die, like I said, so artillery is king. As you can see, I have a formula for winning battles, or should I say sieges, have an entire army divert, cut my army in half, send a diversionary force to essentially pound the entire army. A small elite force will be essentially taking the keep, as you can see right here, this is the small elite force, and these guys will essentially bomb rush the city. Well, at the same time, I do have archers supporting them, and most importantly, artillery. And that is essentially gonna kill tons of people. This is basically the winning strategy for, in my opinion, for every assaulting team that is led by the AI, or should I say, enemy defend if the enemy defender are AI you can essentially use this to great effect. In my opinion this is one of the best strategies and as you can see here my arrows and artillery is raining practically havoc and while the enemy basically does not kill a lot of my dudes which is amazing. Another bad thing is that the enemy army is mostly consists of cavalry which is pretty bad considering the fact that their cavalry can't really be effective against spearmen much less in cities. Needless to say I take the province, Omi, and now we are at a critical juncture because to the west we have Koyoto and to the south we have an actual imperial faction so we are actually doing some good by invading. As you can see here this is one of the imperialist factions who actually originally owns Koyoto and we're just gonna sabotage them. With the enemy army sabotage I'm gonna do something sneaky and that is move my entire army around them. As you can see right here, I'm going to go for Ego, which is basically the home province of the Tzu clan, and we're just going to rush it because this army is disabled, we're just going to rush it as quick as possible, and by the time of spring, we're just going to mass a massive army with our allies. And as you can see here, we're just essentially going to be uh, destroying them with the help of our allies. As you can see here, the nice surrounding provinces are held by the Shogun, and those people are pretty much essentially our allies because they hate the imperialist like, like us. So that's gonna be done quickly and in order the next turn, this is the exact same turn, we essentially do fight a field battle. Now this is the part in which you see the, my limitations of which I do fight a massive field battle. Massive field battles I essentially have to do hammer and ant mill tactics on mass. My cavalry although pretty good against enemy cavalry is terrible against modern units and the reason why is simple. These modern units essentially do have bayonets, and these bayonets pretty much act like spears, since no horse is dumb enough, or should I say crazy enough, to charge on spear lines. I do suffer atrocious casualties, especially on my cavalrymen, which is a very big issue. As you can see, if I was using an imperial army, should I say a western army, this wouldn't have, or should I have, shouldn't have been an issue, which is quite interesting. I do also go around and attempt to coerce troops, and it does happen, and I do grow in power as my troops move west. As you can see here, more and more troops are going to go north to essentially stamp out, or should I say stamp out this faction, and we really need to kill these guys quick, because I do want civil war, the show going to civil war to end, and we are going to move west quicker than ever, because I do have more armies than I should, and we are essentially going to win big time. And because the most important thing is the fact that I need to get rid of the enemy armies as soon as possible. But needless to say, along the line, I do coerce troops to join us. As you can see here, I invite the quote unquote enemy to join us. They don't like it, so I'm just gonna deploy armies to crush them. But before I do, I always give the peace option, which is giving them the ability to join us, and of which these have varying success. Those who don't join are obviously going to get killed, and we essentially do send massive armies to kill them. And as you can see, uh, I am moving west faster than ever, and my massive armies are just straight out right in the field, and they're essentially going to be sieging out enemy settlements as quick as they can. Obviously, as you can see, the enemy army, although not in the field, has been mostly destroyed by my armies that are going west because my army is roughly at this point 10 times the size of theirs, and what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to run them down as quickly as I possibly can because I want the civil war to be over, like I said, for the 100th time. And of course, to notice the some factions, the Tosa decided to declare war on us, and this is sparking the official Shogunate Imperial War, which I am more than certain that we are going to win after the Civil War is over. Like I said, I'm becoming a broken record, but we really need this war to be over, because once the war is over, we can focus on the Imperial Clans. And as of right now, the Imperial Clans do look slightly scary, because the Tosa, which have a 
very good navy, is able to land and take plots, and our shogunate allies in the west are being hampered, should I say. That is why I'm also trying to move as quickly as I can to the west, and this involves moving massive armies to crush any, or should I say, shogunate enemies, which mostly have been created by me, so that's gonna be an issue. But all along the way I do incite revolts, and I do make people join us, so that's hopefully gonna work in my favor. I do coerce troops to make the better of it. Of course, along the lines, I'm also going to sabotage armies, distract army, and do pretty much everything in the book to essentially alleviate the war, or should I say, quicken the war faster. But needless to say, I have the entire situation under control. It is just a matter of time. And speaking of a matter of time, I do go some more sabotage by ninja, and it's pretty interesting. As you can see here, this is the most important part of my expedition, and that is deploying a massive navy and a massive army to go along with this army, and the reason why is that these guys are going to be landing into the heart of the shogunate territory, or should I say, the enemy territory, and we're just going to yank them out. And I do mean landing in the heart of the imperial territories. So that's going to be very interesting. Needless to say, this fleet is massive, around 30 units, which is a lot of my army, and it is quite terrifying, at least 25 units to 30 units, and that is more than enough to cross massive annex. And this army was intended to go west, and eventually you will see that that does not, it's not, isn't really the case. Because this one army is going to go even more west. But needless to say, this massive army, or should I say massive series of armies, this army group should I say, is marching on this Wasaka. And we need to take, like I said, quick, because as you can see in the background, imperialist navies are just, imperial navies are just hampering us. And the shogun really needs a response, or should I say this shogunate really needs a response. I'm gonna try every stuff in the book to essentially quicken this war, like I said, but we really need to get this war done, like I said, probably a million times in this video. This navy, or should I say massive navy, is gonna essentially go for Awaji, and we're trying our best to essentially hit the Imperialists once we can. But as of right now, the main focus is going west. And to my surprise, we're doing it very quickly because through the efforts like me, we're trying our best to go as quickly as possible. As you can see here, we do go to see what is in Harmina, and it is my shock to find out that there is a massive Tosa army, and our allies are still getting hampered, so now we have an issue. I do have an army in the field, which is led by my actually my faction leader, and the as of right now, he's still there to delay or stop the enemy, but the main force is right here, and we are trying our best to end the war. But as you can see, the enemy is quite stubborn, and although I do want to give them a peace treaty and let them join us, which is very possible, I am certain I need to eradicate them as soon as possible. This is probably the only battle in which I decide to use my troops in the Mongol formation, which is have my conscripted troops or troops that I coerce to join me, essentially as meat shields while my elite troops, essentially right here, storm the keep. And the reason why this is so hard during this entire battle was because although I have the numerical superiority, the enemy army is also quite elite and they have the fortification, which is the hard part. We do eventually suffer atrocious casualties, but we and we only won because the timer ran out for the enemy. Needless to say, this was one of the bloodiest battles and one of the only battles in which I had to use the Mongol tactic of running my troops up and getting them killed. Hence why you see such atrocious casualties on the field. Needless to say, Wasaka has been captured and we can keep moving west. And another interesting thing is that we're just trying to deploy all our armies because I have zero patience for this entire endeavor. We are deploying more and more troops as I speak. And I am sending shinobi and what ninjas and spies we can do. Needless to say, an interesting thing is the fact that the entire enemy army, the Tosa army, was hiding in the forest to our right, and I was just going to take the Tosa city. And we eventually do take it, and this is our first strikes back from the shogunate, and now we are winning big time. We have essentially stopped the Tosa attack and their expansion, and we also found a Tosa army, 
and we completed a mission which is to stop the Imperials. As you can see right here, we do see a massive Awaji force which at this point in time is still our enemies. But the most interesting thing is that I, this is the point in which I opt out not to go to take that island. Instead, I'm gonna finish this war and in the next time we're gonna be invading Shikaku. Shikaku. And as you can see here, I'm deploying more troops than I should, and to end this war quick, we're just gonna auto-resolve this massive, massive fight. And of course, I'm more than confident we are gonna win, but needless to say, this war is over, because after this, I sue for peace, or should I say, they sue for peace, and I instantly agree. And after that, next episode, we're gonna be essentially running for a broke, because we are going to win this war, and we're gonna end this war. Needless to say, have a great day, guys. I'll see you in the next one.